Uniquely Wisconsin is about the people behind the places. From the emotional to the heartwarming to the humorous and historic. We hope you like these stories because they are your stories, our Wisconsin. Alexis, is, she's young, and like I said, in 2020, she took a chance. She doesn't like hearing no. I don't take no for an answer very well. <laughs> I feel like, yes, I am very determined, um, self-motivated. I like doing things myself because I know they get done right and my way. Dinner's ready. Perfect. And then you're gonna pick your section. Last year, you guys kind of like caught people before they got up here for Grand State. I'm okay right? if there's a hiccup. Oh, yep, hiccup. All right, let's pause, take care of it, and then like, let's go, <laughs> you know? Um, pretty go with the flow. I, I just, I have this vision, and when the vision is there, it's coming. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't really step in my way. I mean, not literally, but I'll probably run you over. Gary, I need you in your saddle. Where's Hannah? Oh, okay, yep, you got your saddle. Everybody having fun so far? Yeah. I need four, five, and six to just hang tight while I place one, two, and three. And then we're going to walk all the way around to four, five, and six, okay? Don't move. The first big barrel race we went to. I was third in the open out of quite a bit of horses and I won the national youth title. After that, we went on to go to Perry, Georgia to the MBHA Youth World Finals where I ended up fourth out of over 1,100 people. So from 2014 to 2016, we did all the big barrel races and were, was right up at the top. You and your horse have to be super in tune, precise, you can't have a bad day and expect to place in the top. You gotta go and you gotta mean it. In the arena, that's my safe haven. Like I feel so comfortable, whether it's 500 or 5,000, yeah, I just, we I feel at home there. How many folks would like to see this road over three days? It's very mental. Because if you don't, just like anything, if you don't believe you can do it, chances are your success rate's not gonna be very high and you watch them, they're walking around, like they're actually visualizing what that horse is gonna do or what that bull's gonna do. And they're actually trying to see themselves make those moves to be successful and get that eight seconds. It doesn't matter if you're the best athlete in the world, if you don't think you can ride that bull, chances are you're probably not. We're in the entertainment business. I don't like to say we're in the sports business. We have a winner, we have a loser, but at the end of the day, people want, want to be entertained. It's almost like you go to these smaller towns like Phillips, like uh, Spooner, like Manawa. It's a homecoming. My dad's family's from Phillips. My mom's family is from Park Falls, which is just north of here. Price County is actually a beautiful, beautiful county. I mean, we have flowages, we have lakes, we have beautiful trails, we have the national forest, we have woodland, we can do everything under the sun right here in Price County, whether it be snowmobiling, fishing in the spring, summer events, you know, fall rides. I think that's truly an amazing thing. Not many counties get to say that. I just love it. I love, it just feels like home. You have beautiful, I mean, look, look, who wouldn't want to live here, right? If you enjoyed Alexis's story, you won't want to miss our other Price County stories, including legendary snow groomer Frank Dusick and St. Croix, the best fishing rods on earth. Up next, explore the Kenosha Comets and the legacy of the AAG PBL.
I can still hit them. I can't hit that little ball, though. Well, baseball is in your blood. If, I mean, if somebody doesn't like baseball, I think they're absolutely out of their mind. How'd I get into it? Well, I love sports. You know, play out in the field with the boys. Sandlot, we'd throw a shirt down on the field for first base and second base. Or... I took chalk and put it on the cement when I pitched and practiced hitting. You know, I grew up without television. <laughs> you, you probably never met anybody, that, unless it was your great-grandmother, that grew up without television. So that's why we played ball. Walking out on the field and saw the light up, the beautiful diamond with the chalk mark and our lines and everything and the flag waving out there. And you know what you say? Oh, Maybell, you're a professional baseball player. I'm here for our reunion. I think it's the 80th uh, reunion of uh, the League of Their Own. I mean, of uh, the All-Americans. It is the 80th anniversary of the All-American Women's Baseball League. And it's great to be here to celebrate with them this milestone. They're very inspirational. They all have wonderful stories. And that still after 80 years, them continuing to come together as much as they can to share their stories and be together. It's really amazing. The first four teams that ever played for the All-American Girls Baseball League, the Rockford Peaches, the South Bend Blue Sox, the Racine Bells and the Kenosha Comets. The Kenosha Comets were part of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. They were more than just a baseball team. They were a symbol of determination, passion, and progress in women's sports. The story of the Kenosha Comets begins with none other than Phil Wrigley, longtime owner of the Chicago Cubs. During the war, he wanted to make sure baseball stayed alive in America. With this in mind, he came to the conclusion that he wanted to start a women's baseball league. In 1942, Kenosha became one of the first four original teams to join the league, chosen for its proximity and its potential. The Comets officially opened the 1943 season in their home city. On top of everything else, let's show these guys just how good you guys really are, okay? Come on, let's go. Unless they've seen some actual footage of us playing ball, I don't think they have any idea of how good we were. We played good. Baseball. I led my team in almost every category. Hits, runs, RBIs, home runs, stolen bases, you name it. If you only lost two games in four years, you remember those two games. I don't really want to pat myself on the back, but that was pretty good. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? It's better than eating, sleeping, or dreaming, or whatever. You get it in your blood and it never leaves. And I'm 96 now, and it'll never leave until I'm on the other side of the grass. Uh, then I'm still sure I'll be in my casket thinking about it. Hey, throw me that sucker. Oh, don't pitch it to me like that. Throw it to me. See, I can still catch. Oh, my biggest advice is, uh, for ball players, women ball players, or women athletes in general, is follow your passion. Give it everything you've got. Go for it, in other words. Do what feels natural. If you have athletic ability, then use it. Uh, about four or five years ago, the All-Americans created a subsidiary. We named it American Girls Baseball. And the whole idea of that was to promote girls and women's baseball in this country, which was being neglected. And I think one of the things that got me going on it, uh, we had a players meeting, and a few of the people in the players meeting said, Sue, they're not doing anything. And, and then I came back home and I found this little girl playing Little League, and she was gonna be promoted to softball the next year. She said, Sue, I don't like softball and they're gonna make me play it. And I thought, this is wrong, because that was me 80 years ago. I would love to see another professional baseball team for the ladies. I mean, I think all of us in the, our league are hopeful for future women's baseball teams. We would love to see it. 
There'll not, never be another league of their own like ours, but there should be a league. If you enjoyed this story, unearth our other Kenosha County stories available on YouTube, including the preservation of fossils and bones, as well as the history of Kenosha's gorgeous lakefront. Up next, the Show Ski Championship, put on by the Wood County Aqua Skiers. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did it wrong. Is it right first or left first? Oh, in one, two, three. Let's go! I love that it's a sport that you can do with your entire family. Like, I love water skiing, but being able to compete with my family is really awesome. My wife and I uh, both ski with the, with the team as well, and we both grew up skiing. Um, so our daughter is 13 and our son is 11, and they both ski in the show uh, alongside of us. I do doubles with my daughter in the show, and I'm not a doubles guy, but I'm a dad, so I am got kind of roped into doing doubles um, with her. So it's probably one of my most nerve-wracking acts, just because it's if I fall, it's one thing, but if I make her fall, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever live it down. You know, this sport is amazing as you watch families grow. And my family would be a great example. We were, my wife and I were on this beach prior to the children being born. Uh, they were born into this sport. They used to come and watch. And then you watch them join the team. And then you watch them grow uh, within the organization. You're going to see generations. You're going to see, you'll, you'll see great grandparents out here with their great grandchildren who are on the water. And uh, just a tremendous opportunity uh, for families to get involved. And, and for our family, it's certainly been a huge part of their life. I've been involved with this tournament for the last 15 years, ever since I've been a member of the Aqua Skiers when I was 15. So it's kind of cool that this was always my dream to kind of take over the tournament and run it and just have it happen this year, I think is really awesome. Hi guys. It's essentially year round planning. It is the biggest in the world and longest running. And it's incredible that we host it right here in Wisconsin Rapids. And I want our locals to come out and be a part of it and see it because all of these people are out in the community all weekend patronizing the businesses and helping our community economically. It's one thing to go out and do 60 minutes of water skiing, but to put it into storyline and have costuming and props and all the things that go along with it that make that production um, part of it, that's really what makes it unique um, just from being a recreational thing. It's all put together to really make it a stage performance. Show skiing is like the secret sport that not a lot of people know about like in general. You've got members out there that are learning these new skills and they're technical on the water and then we're adding in ballet dances and we're adding in synchronized arm movements on the water. So it's pretty awesome. We go through a lot of spandex and glitter. <laughs> and we're, turning. we're trying to grow the sport. Everyone's really good about teaching one another and you know, trying to bring the next generation up. So it is something really remarkable about show skiing. You're not wishing ill on your competitors, you're cheering them on. You wanna see them do the coolest thing possible. And even though we wanna maybe edge them out to you know, get that placing, we don't wanna do that without them doing their best and us too. And seeing them stand it up and be safe and just watching our sport be able to do really cool things. This is what we work for all year. It's a fun party, but it's also the work, the effort, the late nights, everything that goes into it so that we can be really proud and at the end of the weekend feel like we did our best no matter what. Like I said before, we fall together, we stand together, we cheer each other on. Once everybody hits the water and goes, like you can just hear the roar from the crowd because it's like, yes, they made it. We're very proud to show off our, uh, our skiers and, and, and bring people all over because we love this area and we think people need to see more of it. Art in Motion in Wood County continues with a look at the craftsmanship of C2 Makerspace and the natural beauty of Powers Bluff, available on YouTube.
Up next, a look at the vibrant art scene of Racine County and birthplace of the National Endowment for the Arts. I've had a lot of hats in my life, but um, out of all that, through all the years, you know, art has always been with me, you know, all the time. As an artist trying to get into galleries, just, just kept getting rejected all the time. That over the course of a period of time, you know, it has this effect on you, right? You know, so I finally realized, well, you know, like, why am I subjecting myself to this? Why don't I just, I'll just create my own gallery, you know, I'll just do that. You know, I've, I've been an artist, you know, I, I, I create work. And I never, never thought I could be a gallerist. Well, we're, we're supportive of, you know, artists who typically have not been included, you know, in in the mainstream and and opportunities to, um, you know, build their careers and sell their work and be connected to collectors. And that, that was one of the main reasons why I started the gallery. I think there has been a new awakening, so to speak, and a new awareness that um, hey, we're here. We're impactful to the community. You know, having a conversation with Bruce from RAM, we just had a, a, a great meeting, sort of a meeting of the artistic minds about some of the similarities that we have and some of the differences that we have and also some of the challenges we have as a community. So this is an exhibition of work. We have uh, co-produced educational programs on uh, black American artists, contemporary artists. We have featured their work here at the museum. We've had them speak at Mahogany Gallery. It's all uh, an opportunity that we're trying to create to have different voices and different conversations represented in our exhibition content. Um, I think that's a, those are steps in the right direction to, to really help the community as a whole. And I think what happens with that type of relationship, the community can see that there's active collaborations that are happening around the arts and that may open the door for others to, to want to collaborate as well. I always tell people the interesting thing about the Racine Art Museum, or RAM, as we call it, is that you'll see some artists whose work you're familiar with, but you'll be introduced probably to a lot of artists you've never met before. The um, Racine Art Museum currently holds the largest contemporary craft collection of any art museum in North America, and it's something we're incredibly proud of. We think we have objects here and programs that we present that will change your life in ways that are positive and will be unexpected for you. A lot of people come specifically to Racine to either come here or go there or both and, and check out the art scene and what we have going on. So that was really cool to, to see. And we, and we offer different things. Um, so I think there's more communication you know, between um, government and um, arts institutions. Um, I think there's gradually getting uh, more and more support. One of the, the things that we are really about at this museum is trying to make people more creative during and after their visit here than they were when they first walked in the door. We need creative solutions to our problems. Today, we need people to be creative problem solvers at work. We need people to be lifelong learners. Racine has a long history of being a place of many skilled blue collar workers. People really made their living here making things with their hands. Racine has an art scene. Uh, we have a pretty vibrant art scene um, community that um, you know has artists working in all different mediums and that's working on all parts of the world. You know, but they're you know based from here. I think that's something that we can celebrate as a community. Racine County is alive with competition, creativity, and community, including our dog group's passion for giving back to the town of Burlington, and the story of o h Bakery, known for their world-famous Kringle, available on YouTube. Up next, the legacy of handmade footwear, Russell Moccasin. So all I do is basically like a whip stitch except we wind a thread around the needle. And when you pull the thread in, it locks it in place. So it won't separate. There's no automated process in this entire workshop. And I call it a workshop and not a factory because 
there's, there's no automation. You know, it's not an assembly line. Each of the boots that we make are, are very unique, very special, uh, and they're poised for a lifetime of use. I can't say enough about the, the people that do make them or have made them over the years and how, how what kind of craftsmen they really are and how it's produced because it isn't just a throwaway tennis shoe. Moxie construction is one of the oldest forms of footwear because it's, it's what Native Americans, what Eskimos, it's what they all made their footwear out of because it's very simple, it's very durable because you don't have any weak points on the bottom of the foot where it's actually touching the ground. So it became the boot of expeditionaries, people who were going all over the world to do incredible journeys and trips. Charles Lindbergh, the famous pilot on several of his flights when he was working for Lockheed, was wearing Russell Moccasins, and that pair is now in the Smithsonian, the National Museum of Air and Space. Robert Rourke in the 1950s, a uh, famous writer and safari goer, was wearing them in Africa. Uh, President Eisenhower wore those as his hunting boots for people who were going to very difficult terrains and environments where they had to have uh, a technical footwear. It was the technical footwear of the day. Uh, and that design aspects that made it so durable in those times is, is part of the reason why we've been able to survive 125 years in the same town. I'm an outdoors person. I really do like that, and that's why I got away from the city. So if you like being in the outdoors, it's just a place to be. That's what I love about it. You're right in the center of a lot of different trails. So we got the prairies, we got lakes, we got hills. The area in itself is gorgeous. Wisconsin has a great heritage of, of sportsmanship and people who love the outdoors. Uh, it's a very outdoor-centric state. Um, being here in Berlin, Wisconsin, the reason that we've tried to keep things here as much as possible, uh, investing in this community is we believe that ultimately that heritage is what makes it special, but it's also what's going to ensure that we last another 125 years. And so you never know what unique products you might find in a small town or uh, a county like Green Lake. Is it typically right there at that scene right here? Is where um, I think a lot of people are getting to the point now where you see the waste and the consumption of our society and the point that we've gotten where uh, in, in our minds, uh, footwear is not supposed to last very long, two, three years maybe at most, and then we throw it in the trash and, and get another pair. By making a product of such high quality that's designed to be sustainable, designed to be maintainable so that you can repair and, and keep that product in service for as long as possible, that we can make the best of those materials and ensure they're not being wasted. I think shoes are very important. Uh, they're literally your cars, your tires that take you places, holds your weight. That's one of the things that I like, making practical boots that have uh, withstood the test of time. In order to do something like this, it can't just be about money or about those sorts of things. It's got to be a passion. Uh, everybody that's here, you know, the reason they stay so long in the reads and that they're so loyal and that we've got such a great team is because everybody here is passionate about what we do. When you have a design that works well, um, that has a high degree of durability, there's certain things that you don't need to change because ultimately that's why people come to Russell Moccasin is to get something that you can't get anywhere else. It's a piece of living history. Craftsmanship is so important to Green Lake County. As captured in stories about the blacksmiths and glass blowers of Soulhammer, as well as the makers of Chris Craft Boats and the dedicated fishermen of Green Lake. Available on YouTube. Thank you for watching Uniquely Wisconsin. We hope you like these stories because they are your stories. Our Wisconsin. Check us out on YouTube and the Discover Wisconsin app for more Uniquely Wisconsin.